What's up, y'all? This is Martin Bats Bradford, and you're watching the Venom Vlog with my dude, Seek. And pronounce my man's name right before I unleash some carnage on that ass. See what I did that? <laughs> you can catch me being experimented on by the Life Foundation in Venom, which opens October 5th in all U.S. theaters. Also, check out my personal film page, which is Gumball Monster 504 on YouTube. And you can catch me in Tales from the Hood Part 2, which drops October 2nd. And, and the show called The Oath Season 2. It comes on Sony Crackle. Rock with me, man. Let's go see that Venom. Because I think that bit about to be raw. <laughs> Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Spitting Venom, aka the Venom Vlog. And this is the episode a lot of you have been waiting for, so thank you for being patient with me. And again, we're going to use my webcam. Uh, just because I have to record a lot of this, this could go another hour long. So if it is, you know, I apologize. For those of you who don't want to watch it, that's fine if you want to skip this episode. But this is where I like to include you guys. Everyone who had opinions that are either similar to mine or different than mine that commented on my trailer reaction, I like to respond to. And I won't get through everyone, and some of you left multiple comments, so I'll do my best to go through these and I'll do my best to keep it you know closer to 30 minutes and uh, and try to keep it away from that one hour marker because I know that's a long time and that's uh, I don't expect you guys to watch every one hour video I make to that uh, to that extent you know obviously uh, I try to keep things at least to 30 minutes if I can that's that's like an eternity to me already so the fact that some of you guys watch those videos means a lot to me so thank you uh, but after this we'll go right back to some short videos to make uh, but first, before we get into those, I want to give a big shout out to Martin Bats Bradford, who was super awesome in setting up that intro for us. He uh, reached out to me and, uh, and it was like, hey, man, um, you know, or actually I reached out to him first and I was like, hey, you know, I'm trying to get these intros from actors that are in the movie. I know it's a long shot because, you know, actors got to get approval from their representation and everyone and, and you know, and they got to make sure they what they say is OK to be said. And uh, and so it, it, a lot of work can go into one of those things. And it is a lot to ask for someone, especially considering I'm a small channel. Channel and I don't get like a million views or anything so sometimes you even kind of go well is it worth my time to do it and the fact that we got four actors from this movie is amazing to me it just means a lot so uh, Martin thank you for joining the crew of people who did intros for us it really means a lot to me that the four of you did these and also seeing that Martin is going to be in the upcoming Tales from the Hood 2 I'm so excited because I'm so you know happy that that movie's being made. When that movie came out, I saw it when I was a kid in middle school, I think I was, and uh, I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. It had a nice balance of dark humor, uh, but it had like it, it had comments about society in a way and about the world and you know everything like that and the racism. It, it had all the little tropes that horror movies have to have. Uh, but it was still like a fun horror movie. And it even was tongue-in-cheeky and you kind of rolled your eyes and some of it was goofy and silly. Uh, but overall, I really liked that movie. So when I heard they were making a sequel and I saw that he was in it, it just made me more excited to like, I was like, I got to reach out to this guy. This is so cool. So Martin, again, thank you so much, sir. Uh, everyone, show Bat some love. I put a link to his YouTube channel down below. Uh, he is known as the Gumbo Monster 504 and he had some great videos. I watched a couple of them today and they're fantastic. So I'll put a link down below and make sure not only check out Venom, but also check out Tales from the Hood too when that comes out October 2nd and then also check out his show The Oath when that premieres with the second season on Sony Crackle. All right, without further ado, let's get into these comments. Um, our first comment was from Artur, and he says, uh, Dude, it's amazing. We are Venom, though I think the effects still are not 100% ready, which I totally agree with. And I, I responded as such in the comments, and you said, Absolutely agree. You know, the CG's not done, but it was still a good trailer, and you were like 100%. I watched it 10 times already. So, Artur, thank you so much uh, for that love, and I'm glad you liked the trailer. You know, I know a lot of people out there were very critical of it as as we are with everything nowadays and I thought some people took it almost to kind of a cartoony level of what they were nitpicking but you know I've been there in my younger years I've definitely been there and did similar things in trailers so you know it's whatever it's fine <laughs> um, you know I don't agree I thought the trailer was great and but I do agree that there are effects that need to be finished and there are some other things that need to be worked on and tweaked so I'm not like oh this is amazing I thought it was a great trailer but I am still you know I still have that little voice in my head uh, that you know is preparing me for the worst just in case uh, but uh, luckily you know and and i'm glad to say this you know the optimistic side of me is stronger than that little voice in me so um we also have ash gb said i absolutely loved it awesome uh that's great ash 
Uh, our friend John Lee said, this looks even better than before. Hype level increased for sure. These intros are so cool. Oh, I'm glad you liked the intros too. Uh, it was really great to get uh, you know the actors that have done the intros. We had Ellen, we had uh, Ariadne, and then we also had Jared. And then now we have Bats, which is so cool. Um, and I liked his intro. He was very funny in that intro. Um, Night Marrow says, I have to say this trailer was a treat to watch. Eddie talking to the symbiote, the symbiote snapping his bones back into place, that classic line about the eyes, lungs, and pancreas, and then Venom licking the guy. Venom running slash climbing slash pouncing along a wall. Venom roaring at a camera. Venom tormenting that poor man at the convenience store and chomping his head off. And especially Venom and Riot ripping each other apart. So many cool moments in this trailer. Uh, but Night Marrow did have a gripe. He said, the only real gripe I have, and it is a small one, is that they gave Venom Toes, which is a design choice I've never been a fan of, which we talked about. I mentioned that in my breakdown video too. There are some artists that give Venom Toes, and I know a lot of people don't like that. They just like the flat foot boot looking things uh, that, you know, superheroes and co costume characters normally have. But, uh, but I know some people are not a fan of the toes. I liked it fine on Matt Gargan because Matt Gargan normally walked around barefoot naked when he wasn't in this, you know, when the symbiote wasn't around him. So it kind of made sense that it would mimic that. I, where, I, where I feel like Eddie Brock wore boots a lot and, uh, and you know, walked around New York a lot uh, with shoes on. So it made sense the symbiote would kind of look or mirror a shoe design. I don't know. That's my, like, no prize thinking of, like, reach, you know, digging too deep into that. But, uh, but I know some people aren't a fan of the uh, of the toes, so I get you on that one. Um, also, is it just me or did they pronounce symbiote correctly in this one and not symbiote? Um, so again, I talked about this before. Uh, what they said in the first trailer isn't incorrect either. It is simply a pronunciation thing. Uh, depending on what part of the world you're from, uh, there are people out there that do say symbiote. Uh, that is just how it's you know pronounced to a lot of people. So it's not like they did anything wrong. I would say that Jenny Slate, being an American person, it's interesting that she would say symbiote in the trailer. But it could just be a, a character thing, you know. Like for all we know, her character is you know has a background in studying in Europe or something like that, and just heard the word said that way. Like we don't know anything about her character really, so I don't know. I can't comment on that. But I wouldn't say they changed it because Jenny Slate didn't say symbiote in this trailer. Um, Carlton Drake did, and and we didn't hear him say it in the last trailer. So nothing got changed. We just heard a different character pr pronounce it. So they might do both pronunciations in this movie, is what I'm thinking. Um, Sona the Wolf, our friend Sona says, I love this trailer so much. I'm geeking out right now i can't hold my hype eyes lung pancreas so many snacks so little time uh yeah that was pretty good and yeah i know that's right from the comic books we talked about that in our breakdown video um but uh, i thought it was pretty well although the music did shift i had a little bit of a an issue with the music just all of a sudden coming to a stop and then changing tones completely so that line could be delivered it was clear that they didn't want loud music playing over that so i'm thinking there's still a lot of audio mixing that has to go on uh with the movie so uh so yeah i mean i'll but I'm interested to see the context of it in the film, for sure. Uh, Sona has a bunch more comments. Sona, you said so many comments, I can't read them all. I'm so sorry. Uh, but I will end with this one. You said the shot of Riot ripping Venom is like when Carnage did the same thing in the comic. And I think we talked about that in my breakdown video, too, where uh, the Carnage Unleashed cover, where uh, drawn by Andrew Wildman, and he had uh, Carnage ripping Eddie Brock and the symbiote apart. And you're right, that's exactly what happened with Riot in the trailer, which is really great. A nice little visual nod to the comic books and, and, and a very iconic cover, I would say, too. Uh, Venom Gaming says the dialogue coming from Venom reminds me of the Spider-Man 2000 game, which is a great game and it was used very well in the movie and Riot looks like an uh, ugly mother effer. Dang, can't wait to see your breakdown video. Well, hopefully you enjoyed it. I think you did comment a couple times on that video. So thank you for uh, for watching. And then your next comment was, when are we going to get your breakdown video? You were like a day later. You're like, dude, where is it? Where is it? So yeah, I'm sorry. Um, I needed just time. I mean, that video was very long, obviously. And I think I recorded actually over an hour and edited it down to an hour. Um, but I think I only went like an hour and 15 minutes or something. So it wasn't like a super bad. Um, but I just cut out some things because I just felt myself rambling very long, which I tend to do. Um, then we also have more Venom Gaming comments. But like I said, I'm going to try to give everyone a, a shout out here. Uh, William D says, I'm glad you're excited, but this trailer, this trailer made me lose all hope for this movie. It looks like one of the worst comic book movies ever, which is a shame. I had interest with previous trailers, but this trailer makes it look like a CGI mess. Maybe that's just how the trailer is representing the film, and it'll actually have something interesting character-wise uh, stuff, but so far I don't see it. And that's a valid criticism. I know a lot of people out there that might like upset them or whatever, but that's not a... That's not a you know, out of the question criticism to me. Um, I think a lot of people 
myself included, when we talked about this movie and when we started this show, we were led and told that it's like this body horror thing. It's like a, you know, it's like American Werewolf in London kind of thing. And it has like a little bit of the thing in there and the fly. And my brain was going in a completely different direction. And so when that first trailer came out with just the teaser, I was like, oh no, that's what I was expecting. I was expecting something kind of subtle and, and not in your face and not like, you know, explosion, explosion, even though they did show the car crash in that one. But then the second trailer made it look more like a standard action comic book movie, which was fine. I'm like, all right, if we're going to get that, that's great. But I'm just, I, I feel like sometimes when things are said by the people making the movie, uh, sometimes the marketing doesn't show that. But that always happens with every movie. I'm not going to single out Sony and Ruben Fleischer and all these guys for that. Uh, the, the marketing team has a specific job to do, and that is put people in the seats at the theater. So they released that teaser, and that got some people happy, but majority of people didn't like it. So they reacted and said, okay, our next trailer has to be more action. We have to show what Venom looks like. We have to do this. So then they do that, and people start to kind of turn around. And then I feel like this trailer, there was a bunch of people that went on the fence, and this trailer kind of pushed a, a group of those people off the fence, and they went back to being like not excited for the movie. And I think it's for this reason. I think they were like, oh, I thought we were going to get something different. This looks like you know, like an attempt at like a Marvel movie or something, at least in their words, not my words, obviously. Um, so it's, I don't know, it's interesting, but I, I hear your criticism. I would say you shouldn't feel bad about feeling like that. I saw some people saying like, uh, I think even William's comment was like someone, I, I think, it, I can't remember who it was. I don't want to call anyone out here negatively, but I think one of you other followers on here attacked his comment and said something like, well, you probably didn't, you know, you probably hated Infinity War too, didn't you? Because that was all CG or whatever. And it's like, we can't take it to that level, guys. If this guy wants to come in, he was very respectful. He said, I'm glad you're excited for this video or this trailer, but it didn't do it for me. He was super respectful. Like he, there's no reason to treat anyone like that. So I removed that comment because I thought that wasn't fair to William. And I don't want him to feel like he can't leave an opinion that's different than mine in the comments. Uh, that's not how I want to behave on here, and that's not how I want to see people behave on here. So um, so do your best, you know, to accept other people's opinions. And it doesn't matter if it collides with something or if you think it makes them hypocritical in some way. Like, it doesn't matter. We all like the things we like, and we all don't like the things we don't like. Uh, some people follow in a sheep mentality, and other people, which I think are majority, have, you know, like an honest, uh, that's their honest gut, uh, you know, feeling on stuff. So if William feels that way, he should be able to say it in the comments. And William, thank you for leaving your comment, because I know it's not easy coming to a show called The Venom Vlog, and uh, where everyone's excited and leaving a descending opinion. And I know some of the other guys do that too, and that's okay. I'm all right with that. Um, I, I'm down for conversation. So, uh, you know, for me, I said, you know, this trailer looks like it was cut for a mass audience, and it was cut for those people who weren't happy with the first teaser trailer, and maybe people who, you know, just want to see a bunch of action. And I think they did their job. I think that trailer still got a lot of views, got a lot of people liking it, got a lot of upvotes on it, a lot more than downvotes. And I think for the most part, the general public is interested in this film, uh, for the most part. But they still have two months to go, a little less than two months now, and they Sony does have to hold that interest. So everything from here on out is very, very crucial to getting people to go see this movie on opening day and opening weekend, and then hopefully getting good word of mouth for second weekend so it doesn't have a colossal drop like a lot of movies did this year. So, uh, you know, time will tell uh, how that, you know, how this reacts to the general public overall. But uh, for now, you know, don't be afraid if you have a different opinion than me or any of us, leave it down in the comments. And for the rest of you guys, try your best, please, to not attack someone or try to throw something else in their face in a way to like get them on something. It's like, it's not worth it. Uh, William seems like a good guy and he came in very respectfully. So we should treat him in, you know, in return as such as well. Our friend here named Donner Muhammad says, uh, why the CG and visual effects look unreal and cartoonic? Will they fix it? Uh, I would say 100% they're going to fix this, the, the visual effects on it. Uh, they're still working on it. And I'm actually surprised, compared to the Comic-Con footage, uh, which they did show some extra stuff than what we saw in this trailer, and some of it did look a little bit more brutal, but some of it did look, you know, definitely unfinished. So it's, it's uh, interesting to me that they still took a couple of those unfinished shots, maybe polished them a tiny bit, and then put them in this trailer. That's kind of interesting to me because I would have... Um, like I said in my in my initial reaction when I saw the Comic-Con footage, I told you guys, you know, if they put this out there, people are going to be very critical of it, of the visual effects. And I was right. When they put this trailer out there, I was like, wow, this has a lot of the same shots. 
and the visual effects still aren't done. I mean, it's only been like a week. Like, they, you know, what were they thinking? It's almost like they were jumping out too soon. Again, I, th I find Sony's marketing uh, group on this movie very reactionary on a lot of levels, um, especially the trailer people. Um, so I'm not going to say they're marketing. Like, there's different groups in the marketing department that are all doing different things and trying to get interviews and, you know, things like that. And we will talk about more of those coming up. I think Tom Hardy did an Esquire interview. So we're going to talk about that. So there, there's people that go out there and do that kind of stuff. And they're PR people and stuff that work for Tom Hardy that do that. And then there's also like the people who are just cutting trailers together and working on the visual marketing of the film. And uh, I would say that, uh, you know, they are too reactionary, uh, you know, uh, to an extent, but also we're two months away, uh, so we need this movie out there, and they need the visual effects done as quickly as possible. So hopefully, whenever we get the final trailer or TV spots coming up in like 30 days, hopefully we will see nothing but completed stuff, because if the CGI looks like some of those shots in the movie, when the movie comes out, if they, if they remain unchanged, I feel like this movie is definitely not going to get a lot of praise from people who like good CGI in their films, you know? And I thought the whole point of this movie was to make a like a more intimate you know, lower budget take on things. And what they showed in this trailer looked like a lot of big effects. And so I'm hoping they didn't just show all the big effect scenes in this trailer. I'm hoping they still saved some of that for the movie. And I hope they use them sparingly because we talked about early on practical effects versus visual effects and how I hope this movie has a little bit more practical than visual, but it's looking more and more like they're amping up the visual end. And I think Sony being a little bit more maybe afraid or nervous about this movie is sinking a little bit more money into it uh, on the post-production end. I don't know that for sure. This is just my speculation based on the escalation of stuff we've seen in the trailers, but who knows, maybe that was the plan all along. So, you know, the final movie is what we'll have to judge it on. Um, and I know a lot of people have been talking about ratings and stuff like that of what the movie's rated today. We will get another video on that very soon, I promise you. Uh, but so let's get back to that. So as far as uh, Dana, as far as you're concerned, or as far as my response to you, yes, they are definitely going to fix the visual effects. Um, and uh, and hopefully they get them to be near perfect for when the movie comes out is what I'm hoping. Um, Soul Sick says, honestly, I don't really know what to feel about the movie. CGI looks a bit off. I don't know. It looks kind of raw, but whatever. Hope this movie does well and we'll get the second one with the more budget and less limitations. And that's, I think, everyone's hope is I think this is one of those, you know, situations where they're like, if the good one, the first one's great, then the possibilities are endless after this. And so I think right now, Ruben Fleischer, at least, and Tom Hardy, you know, they did everything they could. Ruben's still working on the movie with his editors and his production, post-production team. Um, but, you know, Tom Hardy's like, I've done everything I can do. You know, we did our best to make just a solid movie. And if it's something bigger and better, you know, that's on Sony, and that'll be something that is discussed another day. Uh, and uh, he goes, but for now, my work is done, and now it's in Ruben's hands and Ruben's vision hopefully is coming to fruition in post-production. And uh, and what we saw on Shopee Aluko's uh, uh, Instagram the other day where she was doing ADR, she did mention that she loves what she's seen and that she she praised Ruben Fleischer for, for having a real vision on this movie. So I'm hoping that's the case, and I know that's what people got to say sometimes, but I feel a lot of genuine uh, reactions coming from actors in this movie. I think they're really excited to see people react to this because it is, to them at least, on, on, the, on the work they've put into the movie, does feel different than other stuff. And Shope, she's worked on Black Panther, uh, which is a very big budget MCU movie, and now she's doing Venom. So she probably firsthand can see the differences between making both films and both styles of film. So she's a good source, and to see her this excited is, is pretty neat. And I'm, uh, it definitely gives me more hope for this movie. Um, Planet Mars 2030 says, this is really awesome. You got Jared Bankins announcing the intro for your video. Very cool Venom vlog episode seek. Wondering if Reed Scott's character was Dr. Kafka, um, or better yet, is he Dr. Roland Treese? But Scott Hayes is Treese slash Crane mixed. I know they said that the latter is Treese. Maybe Reed's character is just a scientist. What do you think? So Planet did mention this, and I think he mentioned it on my breakdown video too, and I, I think I might have missed uh, this comment, where... Uh, in the breakdown video, we saw Reed Scott dressed up as a scientist or a doctor, and it looks like that he is uh, going to play a doctor in the movie and maybe not play uh, Patrick Mulligan, who is, becomes Toxin in the comics. So I thought at first maybe he was going to be Toxin and he was going to be a cop who is uh, working in San Francisco and, you know, he gets infected or he gets a symbiote of his own or something. I thought that was going to be like a little Easter egg thing where you're just like, oh, we'll give him a couple lines in the movie and uh, and he'll just be... he'll. he'll potentially be a character we bring back later on. Maybe he's the police officer that arrested uh, Cletus Cassidy or something. Like, I thought they were going to do something like that with him, but it doesn't look like the case. Uh, it looks like he's going to be a doctor, but I don't know who. The Dr. Kafka theory is interesting, but to make Dr. Kafka male, I think, would kind of ruffle some feathers, and I think uh, they're not 
it, it to me Sony doesn't seem like they're doing what uh what so, what what they did with Spider-Man Homecoming. And Spider-Man Homecoming Literally, almost every character was named after a Spider-Man character. There was like Ned, but it's like, well, was it Ned Leeds, or, or are you just saying Ned because you can't really say Ned Leeds because of the joint sharing of you know these characters from Sony and Marvel? And then you know they called the girl MJ at the end, but it doesn't stand for Mary Jane because her name isn't Mary Jane in the movie. So there's things like that to where like like for me, I didn't like that about Homecoming. I, I felt like oh, just make the characters the characters. But Sony, home, you know, with Homecoming, it with Marvel, they had limitations on their film as well, just like you know Venom has with its movie. So this deal, I don't know if is is working out the best for both companies. I think eventually they might have to just merge, or or you know Marvel will or Disney will have to buy Sony at some point um, to get the characters back. And although I don't want that, I like when things are separated. It's just I think at at the end of the day, that's just going to be the path where everything goes, and uh, whether I like it or not. And um, and so as far as changing the characters, it, that could be a thing. That could be something that where they go, we could call him Dr. Kafka, but it can't be a, a female because the rights, like we would have to share that with Marvel or something. Like, so there could be so many limitations we don't know about, but I doubt though that he's a male version of Dr. Kafka. I'll say that right off the bat. He's not Dr. Roland Treese, I don't think. Um, but Roland Treese, from what I heard, is Scott Hayes, and we saw people who were filming, like Atlanta filming, in our earlier videos, he was there taking pictures on the set of the movie when they were filming in Atlanta, and he even said that they heard uh, Scott's character, Scott Hayes' character, uh, addressed as Re uh, Treese. So I'm led to believe he might be playing Treese, but I don't know for sure, obviously, because there's been no official announcement of that. Um, but yeah, he does look like a Crane mix because in the comics of Lethal Protector, Crane was the shaved head guy that worked for uh, um, Carlton Drake. And so I think he is kind of an amalgam of those two characters. Um, but we'll see. We'll, I don't know for sure. But as far as the Kafka thing goes, I hope not. I hope they save Dr. Ashley Kafka for a sequel um, and dealing with uh, Cletus Cassidy because I know a lot of us grew up on the 90s cartoon um, and she was a big part of that storyline. And then also in the comics, her and John Jameson, uh, J. Jonah Jameson's son, they became very involved with the Carnage symbiote in the comic books as well, with uh, like Mind Bomb and some of the other comics we talked about on the show. So I wouldn't be surprised, but at the same time, you know, I, I don't know. I don't think the Dr. Kafka thing, though, is, I don't think he's going to be a male version. Glacial Seth says, hey, I loved your trailer breakdown. Did you see the shuttle have the life letters written in it? So I think the Carlton Riot character has plans for this. I would love to hear your theories about that, knowing that the comics are also based on planet symbiotes. Maybe this four or five symbiotes that they have arrived are only a few, like a recon team. So it'd be cool to start off an invasion. What I found most interesting is that Venom and Riot have a background story, so it makes me think about Venom symbiote history in the comics, which he was a prisoner for the other symbiotes, or, or and then you get cut off, apparently. I don't know if there was more of that... Uh, that comment, but I did respond to you, but I agree, and that was something I think I said in my breakdown video, or maybe not in my breakdown, but in another video, where I talked about um, that there is a backstory for the suit, the symbiote itself, and it has connections to Riot, and I think that's not a bad idea. I remember a lot of people, they've been focusing really heavily that this movie is based off Lethal Protector, Lethal Protector, but one of the first things we learned about this movie from the Brazil Comic Con was Ruben Fleischer said he's basing it off of Lethal Protector and Planet of the Symbiotes. And I notice a lot of people kind of, they, some people made videos on Planet Symbiotes, but most people ignore that and keep focusing on the, the you know, the, the main Lethal Protector storyline. But I think there is something to that Planet of the Symbiotes comment, and if he says it's based on it, I would not um, throw it out of the uh, realm of possibility that it is an invasion story. In Planet of the Symbiotes, the short version is that it's a it's a beginning of Eddie Brock and the suit kind of not really working well together, so they separate temporarily um, and go off on their own adventures and then eventually come back together and realize that they need each other, so it's kind of like a break up and come back together kind of story, uh, but it also shows their codependency on each other and that they've both been rejected um, from their subsequent races, like Eddie Brock has been an outcast by humanity and his in the suit has been an outcast from the the clintars or you know what i guess they're not called that anymore uh but you know if you read the donny kate stuff now but or whatever i don't know maybe he didn't retcon that i don't, I don't remember but anyway so you have that going on where they both feel exiled and then they you know they're like all right we're, we're better together and then they actually make a big decision in it which is you know their home planet the symbiote's home planet there's a gateway so some symbiotes came to earth like five or six of them and they're infecting humans and bringing machinery to this like secluded area in the woods and they're building a stargate in order to transport uh 
Clint, you know, symbiotes from Clintar to Earth so they can dominate and take over Earth. And, uh, and so that was, that's like the basic story of it. So I wouldn't be surprised if the shuttle and Life Foundation, considering they have shuttles and they have access to outer space, and Dr. Carlton Drake kind of believes that humanity's evolution exists in the stars and that Earth is no longer going to be a habitable planet for us, so he's looking for life elsewhere or whatever. Um, I have a feeling that that is not far off of your theory there, and it's something we talked about before as well. Um, so I think there might be some... some motivation there with Riot wanting to build a shuttle or build something that will bring more symbiotes to Earth. Uh, and, and maybe Venom and Eddie have to make a conscious decision to make that not happen. And maybe that's the one heroic thing they do is stop an invasion. Maybe they still get a bunch of people killed because they're, you know, anti-heroes and whatever, but maybe they at least stop an invasion. So not a bad theory. I like where your head's at on that one. Um, Default Boy says, trailer was insane. Seek, does this trailer was just like that one at Comic-Con? And I told you, I say, I think I, re yeah, I responded to you, but I would say it was close to the one we saw at Comic-Con, certainly had similar footage, but there was just more shown at Comic-Con. Uh, the scene where the guy is in the convenience store and, uh, you know, Eddie Brock turns into Venom and threatens him. That scene was a little bit longer. There was like a little bit at the beginning where it shows the, the guy terrorizing Mrs. Chen and he's like causing her problems. And then Eddie kind of is like, oh, I got to go get involved with this. And he, you know, goes over and then you see the scene you saw in the trailer. So there's a little bit more. There's a couple extra action shots too that weren't finished, uh, you know, CGI wise and stuff. Um, but for the most part, you got the gist of what was shown at Comic Con. So if, if you're thinking you missed out on something, I think you're pretty good with this trailer. It, it was close enough. Um, I'm so happy we finally got a great trailer since Transformers The Last Night. Lego Deadpool says, oh, wait, I don't know if he's being sarcastic or not. Uh, Lego Deadpool does like to have fun on the channel here. So uh, I guess he's comparing this trailer and saying it's as good as the last night trailer was. Uh, but then again, I did. I think I did a trailer reaction to last night. I was kind of slightly excited for that movie. Um, if you go back and watch my old videos, I actually went to early uh, you know, access footage and seeing like parts of the movie before the movie came out with uh, Michael Bay was there. He signed my poster and they gave out free posters and they gave out like 10 iPads and like it was crazy. Like it was a crazy event. Uh, I didn't get an iPad, unfortunately. <laughs> that would have been nice. Um, but uh, but I know a lot of people there had fun and it was a cool event. So, um, so I don't know if he's being genuine here or if he's like poking fun at me, but either way, it's okay. You can poke fun at me for being excited for a Transformers movie. Um, Freezy Beach says, holy shoot, this is so awesome. I can't believe it. We are Venom question. The ye yellow symbiote, is it Scream? Uh, that's my theory that it could be Scream, but I don't know for sure. Uh, it, make, it would make sense, you know, that if, if it was Scream, but I, I have seen no confirmation on it. I love to speculate and I love to think and have my mind wander to places, but at the same time, I also like to pull myself back as someone who makes content for you guys and uh, try to focus on things that mostly have some kind of source to them or some kind of like, you know, uh, confirmation if I can. Like IMDB is probably the one gray area where I'll pull from and be like, all right, it's probably true, uh, because some of these actors just want to get their IMDb's updated so they can get more jobs. So it would make sense that they would just put stuff on there. Um, but I, th then also I, I take that with a grain of salt too. So uh, with this though, I would say it could be Scream, but I don't know for sure. I hope it's Scream. I'll say that. I hope it's Scream. Um, Dark Side Effect says, love the trailer. By the way, big, congr big congrats on your YouTube channel. Only thing that bothers me, Venom is a bit too big for my taste. He is almost Hulk size, and I had the feeling that We Are Venom scene with Scott Hayes in the last trailer looked more realistic, more adult in some way. Hope they're going to fix things. Only two months left, and Sony is starting a good promotion from now on. Yeah, Sony's doing okay on the promotion. I won't say they've been great, uh, but uh, but I would say some of the stuff that's out there is pretty interesting. I like the Eddie's Clubhouse thing. That's something that it's kind of like what we do on this channel. It's, it's getting involved directly with fans, giving them a place that they can send their questions to to kind of steer them away from tagging probably Ruben Fleischer and Tom Hardy and a bunch of stuff uh, like I do sometimes, so I'm trying to get better at that because uh, I don't want to come across as bothering people. I just want to show how excited I am for this project. Um, so, uh, so I could see that, you know, I could, I could see that, you know, the promotion is, it's doing okay for me, I, but it needs to really ramp up with these last two months left. Uh, but as far as, uh, the, the venom being too big, I know that's a big criticism and I hear you on that one. For me, I've always said, I like the monster version of venom. I don't like the version of venom. Who's just like, uh, like if Peter Parker's like 180 pounds, you know, in shape and venom's like 200, 40 pounds in shape. Like, I never really liked that. I always liked Venom when he towers over Spider-Man. Uh, that's some artist's interpretation. Obviously, that's not like McFarlane or Eric Larson's interpretation. They make Eddie Brock within like a couple inches or maybe a foot at the most taller than Peter Parker. But I like the bigger version personally. So this doesn't affect 
I'm not so bummed out about this, but I know a lot of people are. So I hear your criticism on that, and uh, you're not wrong to have it. You're not wrong to have that criticism. I know a lot of people have their favorite version or li certain look that they like of the character, and uh, I can imagine making a movie is hard. That's why I thought it would be good to evolve it and maybe have him be smaller in the beginning of the movie, where he's kind of like you know Tom Hardy size, and then like you know add like a few pounds the next time he transforms, and then as he you know gets you know uh, used to using the suit become bigger and then at the end when he's up against riot and he's a giant monster he then has to you know be like all right we got to really reach our potential now and fight this thing and i thought that would have been a great evolution a visual evolution for the character in the movie but it looks like he's going to get one look in the movie and he's going to stick with it so maybe consistency is a better option you know i won't know until i see the movie um so i saw some people have theories on here i don't want to go over too many theories because some of them I think are pretty accurate. So I will say, uh, Craig, you had a really good theory in yours about the final fight. Um, and we did talk a little bit about that with the launch pad and stuff. So I don't want to go into more detail and on the off chance that you're right. And I don't want to talk about it more in case I you know, might spoil something myself. So uh, so I would say though, I liked your theory a lot. I thought you, had a, you were pr pretty close to where my mind was on that one too. Um, uh, Kune Dragon says, I love this. Way more Venom action uh, is so much fun. Still kind of worried if it'll have the R-rated horror aspect, but I assume this action trailer is way better for marketing. And so that's what we talked about. I think so too. I think the trailer is, is cut for a specific audience. And of course, fans and fanboys and everyone, fangirls and everyone online are going to tear it apart and say what they like and don't like about it. But for the most part, it's not about what we think on it. Uh, to an extent, I mean, sure they care a little bit because they want they want our money, obviously. Uh, but at the same time, they do want uh, you know they want to see how the, ma the masses react to it, and that's who that trailer I think was cut for. Um, Green Lizard Balls and a couple other people I think sent me images, but I can't really. You know, this is not an image. I don't like to pop up images on these videos. I like to focus on you guys, so I'm sorry I can't share that. But thank you, thank you, good Green Lizard Balls. Uh, shout out to you. Uh, Xenozilla Art says, oh my gosh, that was uh, so worth the wait. The trailer was cool. Venom's voice sounds a little different to me, but not sure about the accent Tom Hardy is doing, but this still looks awesome. The scene of Venom and Riot fighting looks so darn cool. I'm excited, so excited. I could ramble for an hour over everything I liked, but I won't. Awesome video, Seek. I hope you have a good day. Well, as you can tell, I can ramble for an hour too, so no problem. You can ramble for an hour here. That's totally allowed. I, if I you know, told you you couldn't do that, I'd be a big hypocrite. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, the, the voice and the audio, a lot of people criticize too. And I think, again, those are valid criticisms. Uh, again, we'll have to wait for the final product. I hope they hear what people are saying. And if there's enough people saying it, then it's clearly something that they need to look at. And uh, and so even for myself, even though I'm like, hey, I understood what was being said, uh, doesn't mean everybody does, obviously. And so if people out there have that criticism, then you know, hopefully that'll get tweaked and it'll get to a point where we're all happy. Um, so let's see. Uh, Pufan says, I noticed what looked like a space shuttle in the background near the end. Anyone else? Reminds me a little of the 90s cartoon. So yeah, we did already talk about that. Um, but yes, I noticed that too on my second viewing of the trailer. And then when we did the breakdown video, obviously when I went frame by frame, I saw that. So yeah, that's very exciting. I would be really cool to see Venom have to outthink his enemy where most of the movie he's just brute force and then you have to have Eddie Brock go like no give in to me for once let me think our way out of this and I'll come up with a strategy to fight this guy and maybe they do what Spider-Man did in the 90s series and they web him or stick him to the side of the shuttle and send him off into space and maybe the ship explodes you know from the extra weight or whatever uh, and he destroys Riot that way who knows uh, but it'll be pretty cool to see how they do that um Christian Cottle says, this was awesome. I can't wait. Nice and simple. I like it. And I'm with you 100%. Uh, Samuel Villagra Stanton, Stanton says, I'm excited. I like your red hood uh, thumbnail, by the way. I'm excited to see more of Venom and the other symbiotes in action. Venom's eyes are amazing. I love the expression on his face. Yeah, I saw Todd McFarlane. We did that video where he tweaked the eyes. I still would have liked the little spikes up on the eyes because it just... It, it makes it look more alien when he has like the long eyes and they're kind of humanoid looking. I'm like, ah, it's alien-ish looking, but uh, something like that is just really out of this world. And, and I think that's why Todd McFarlane drew it that way uh, back in the day, because you know it just looked neat. So uh, I would have liked something more like that, but I do like that they show expression. Uh, that's very key. And I think a lot of superhero movies like with Spider-Man, Deadpool, like they're trying to put more of that expression in the mask, have the eyes move and everything. So to have Venom do it makes a lot of sense because they're actually his eyeballs, <laughs> you know, so it would make sense that they do that. Um, Josh Main says, hey, Seek, I'm a big fan. Is it just me or does the trailers keep on getting better and better? 
Either way, I think this will be the best uh, comic book movie since Dark Knight Trilogy. Wow, big praise. By the way, how could you feel? How would you feel if Michael Fassbender or Matthew McConaughey as Carnage? Please reply and thanks. Um, I mean, Fassbender is a great actor, but I think he already. I thought he does Magneto really well. I think. Um, Matthew McConaughey is an interesting choice, uh, but I think a lot of people, I know Demona especially, uh, she li- she likes to chime in. She wants like a younger, more like, uh, you know, kind of handsome, like inviting kind of carnage. Like she wants someone who like could maybe like lure you in and then he kills you, you know, someone a little bit more, you know, s- has like a little more, more innocence to their face um, and, and not someone, someone who's like maybe older at this point. I could go either way with carnage. I mean, a young guy who's like, you know, looks like, Demona's description could work for me, uh, and then you know someone like Matthew McConaughey or uh, you know or who who they uh, Woody Harrelson like he could they could work too. Um, for me, if it was an older person, someone over forty, I would say do the Hannibal Lecter thing with them and have him be locked up and have him be the guy Eddie Brock talks to at uh, at prison from time to time. Maybe gets a little bit of information out of. And then he breaks out at the end and uh, becomes Carnage for the next movie, kind of like what they did with Silence of the Lambs or something. Um, or what was the other Silence of the Lambs they did? <laughs> I think I think it was that one. Doesn't he get away at the end? So yeah, spoiler alert for that movie. Um, but yeah, so I could I could see either way. Uh, but uh, Matthew McConaughey, that's a good choice. But he did play a bad guy in something recently that I didn't like him in, which was Dark Tower. And I was like, oh, he's playing like the the devil essentially. Like he's playing like the Stephen King's main you know antagonist for his books. And uh, I didn't think he did that great of a job. So, you know, obviously it comes down to, you know, the director and what kind of, you know, vibe they're going for and what they decide to do with the character. So I th- think he could pull it off. I think Matthew McConaughey is a great actor. But for Fassbender, um, I'm not so sure. I like him as Magneto and, you know, that's fine. Um, Legendary Moji says, loving your videos, man. Really hope your channel continues to grow. Thank you for making content for us. Hey, you're welcome. You don't ever have to thank me for that. I thank you guys for watching because I know um, there's a lot of great people out there and there's a lot of people out there that make probably more like, you know, click friendly, you know, invited videos like where they're, they're a little bit more direct with what they're talking about and they don't ramble as much and they're not so much, you know, like me in a way. Like I think there's a lot of great people out there making content. Um, so the fact that you guys take any time at all to watch me means a lot. And because you do, I will keep making content for you guys. So thank you for saying that. Um, Omari says, cool reaction. Hey, thanks. Nice and simple. I like that. <laughs> thank you. Um, Dion Henry says, like a turd in the wind. I love it. Yeah, I know. I want to get that on a shirt. We talked about shirts. I'm still working on it. I, I haven't pulled out my other computer yet. I have an old desktop that kind of broke down a couple months ago. Uh, and then before that, my laptop went kaput. So I have bad luck with computers. But I've been holding on to it in my in my closet, the desktop. Um, sadly, I couldn't save the, the, the hard drive of my, um, my laptop. So all the stuff that was on there is gone until I can fix it. I think someone said it will cost like $400 to fix my hard drive. So I'm trying to save up money for that because there's some very important stuff on there, especially with a friend who I filmed his like reunion and I lost that footage. Uh, it's on this hard drive. It's this hard drive salvageable. It's just going to cost like th- three, four hundred dollars to fix it. So uh, it's like I'm trying my best to like scrounge some money. But I've been eating peanut butter and jelly for like five days now. So clearly I'm not doing so good on on, on the money front. Um, but the other computer I have, I think I'm going to pull that out. It has Photoshop on it. And um, I'm probably going to work on some shirt designs uh, in the next like week or two. I might need more time than I initially said I was, but I think I might do a turd on the wind shirt, <laughs> turd on the wind shirt, and then also a parasite shirt. I think um, someone was asking me, what should we call ourselves? Like the, the Venom Squad or blah, 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 you know, something like that. And I used to call everyone the Destroyers because I'm Seek, so it was like Seek and the Destroyers. And I still might make that shirt like a band. Uh, seeking the destroyers so we still might make that shirt but i also like the word parasite i like calling you guys parasites so you probably see me doing that a lot on twitter lately is calling you guys parasites so you guys let me know how you think of that do you like being called a parasite <laughs> let me know if, if so maybe we'll, we'll move forward with t-shirt ideas our friend harvey brooks dodd says i'm a bit late but i enjoyed your reaction seek if you change the playback to 0.25 when the woman creates a spike on her arm you can see her slit a man's throat definitely an r rating so the r rating thing we're going to talk about um because today some news broke where everyone's losing their mind some variety article came out and i've read it and i have my thoughts on it i even tweeted at variety about it um and uh you know me i've I've definitely done that on the show before where i feel like a journalist isn't living up to their uh potential and they're not doing things in a way that i think makes things clear and uh, I understand that their job at the most part is to get clicks and shares and views and everything like that. So it, it makes sense they structure the article in this way to do this. But 
but I'll make a whole video on it. We'll talk about it. Trust me. Um, but I'm I wasn't very happy with that because I want to know definitively if it's rated R or PG-13, and I hate that all these sites are you know guessing essentially or they overheard someone say something and they're using hearsay as like you know a, a way to report something and it's like you know so i when i when things aren't reported with actual quotes and actual details i kind of question it and that article had a lot of quotes in it for about other projects and other things they're working on but had nothing on this like they couldn't get one executive to qu have a quote for for you know the rating of this and i find that pretty ridiculous and i also see that it had two uh, authors were claiming uh, ownership of that article there was like two uh, you know it says written by two names and uh, and so i'm wondering if the second name just added that paragraph in with no quotes in it because it was one of the few paragraphs that didn't have quotes and if they added it in so they had their headline so that they could share it and get clicks and stuff so i don't know uh, i have a lot of theories on that some of them are wild and crazy theories but at the same time I, like i like to go off actual quotes but we'll talk about that in another video i'll try to keep that video short too um but I'm, th I'm hoping for an R rating. But if we don't get that, it's not the end of the world for me. I'm still going to go see the movie, obviously. But I thought the whole point of this was to make an R-rated movie. I thought it was to react to Deadpool and Logan. and But it wouldn't surprise me if Sony got cold feet right at the end, <laughs> you know, and decided that they wanted a PG-13 movie. It wouldn't surprise me at all because studios do that all the time. Uh, just look at the DC movies. Like, those things got last-minute changes, and look what happened to those movies. So hopefully Venom doesn't have that kind of uh, treatment to it. Uh, ben Misek, I, I, I always feel like I'm saying your last name right when I read your name out loud, when I read your comments, but Ben, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but Ben says, uh, wow, that is all. <laughs> Thanks, Ben. Uh, I agree. The trailer was wow, and uh, and that's all. That's all you can say. Uh, Kevin says, are the other symbiotes going to be in this? I saw a container with a yellow symbiote. Uh, my short answer is yes. Uh, there will be other symbiotes in this movie. I think we covered that with the Comic-Con interviews. So, um, Yes. There will definitely be, clearly you saw Riot. Um, as far as the yellow one, I think there was also a blue one that hooked onto Jared. So I think we're going to get other symbiotes for sure. How long they live and survive, I don't know. Because maybe Carlton Drake accidentally kills one in testing uh, by you know burning it or finding out Sonic's hurt it or something. So that could happen for sure. And that way it's like, hey, here's Phage. Oh, there goes Phage. <laughs> you know? uh, so I, I wouldn't surprise me if they, they did something like that. But yeah, you'll see other symbiotes. Uh, Brendan Roan says, uh, it looks so cool. I really want to know how Venom gets their name. The CGI looks unfinished, but by the way, uh, they have animated, Ven the animated Venom looks amazing. Yeah, the way they animate him looks really good. Some of those shots looked really nice. I know a lot of people comment on him being wet. They're like, oh, he looks wet. It's like, well, it's a movie. It's a, it's like a different kind of palette, a, you know, different visual medium than a comic book. Uh, in the comic book, not every artist would be able to make him look wet. Uh, certainly, I don't think Spider-Man looked wet, uh, you know, when he had the alien symbiote on him. So I think a lot of people are doing that. But when you translate things, sometimes you look at things and go, well, it's a liquid. It's a liquid thing that goes around. And even though in like the Spider-Man 3 movie, it was also kind of liquidy and kind of goo-like when it went on Tobe Maguire and, uh, and Topher Grace, it did look like uh, a suit. And that's because it was. It was mostly a practical effect. It was something they stitched and sewn together for the actors to wear. This is not the case, so I think they were just like, their thought process was, we can do anything we want, let's add a texture to it, let's let have it glisten in the light so it stands out more, because again, if you make a solid black character, it's just going to get lost in the shadows, especially something that fights uh, bad guys at nighttime. So uh, it makes sense to add some kind of texture to the, to the suit. Uh, so I think that's the main purpose why the suit looks a little liquidy is because other than them just looking at it and going, well, it's a liquid kind of creature, I think they also were thinking of, well, in, you know, we got to also have them stand out and look, you know, if he's standing in an alley, we want to see enough of them. Uh, so we'll have like a, a spotlight kind of shimmer off his forehead and then you'll see the, the veins and stuff too. So I think it's just all part of the visual design. It's obviously all intentional, but I know not everybody likes it very much. Um, but uh, as far as them getting their name, I don't know. That would be really cool. I hope they discover that in the movie or come up with that in the movie. I'm thinking it could be something simple like, oh, you know, after I lost my job, like Eddie Brock's like, after I lost my job, everyone was just spewing venom at me. And then, uh, or maybe, you know, the suit is like, oh, I was being experimented on and they kept sticking me with this poison or this venom and it was, you know, hurting me. And so now I want to be the poison to them. You know, I want to be the venom to their uh, system and go in and, you know, F them up the way they f me up. So maybe it could be something that cheesy um, or maybe it could be, maybe there's a reason for it. Maybe it was called Venom on Clintar <laughs> and maybe <laughs> Venom just means something different on their planet like Cuddly One. I don't know. Uh, Silent J says, dude, I'm now completely sold on seeing it day one. So much 
Uh, so much full on Venom action. Yes, it has a lot of Venom action, definitely. And I'm obviously, you know, day one, I'm going to go see it. I have a busy October. Uh, so as you guys know, I'm going to be moving in October. Uh, the Venom movie comes out the first week of October. I think we're going to try to move out mid-October. So I might actually have a roof over my head to at least film the review for you guys. But after the review comes out, you may not see me on YouTube for like two weeks because I'll probably be moving. And unfortunately, I have a surgery coming up uh, the week of, well, right now it's planned for the week of Halloween. Um, but I, I'll have more details on that soon and I'm going to try to shift the dates around. Uh, because I can't take off vacation time in November because of work. I have to be there, you know, for work uh, during the holidays. It's very busy. Uh, so I have to try to get my surgery in before the end of October. And I have to plan it around this move. And then also plan it to where I can still enjoy this movie and do something fun with you guys uh, before I go into surgery. So I'll, you know, give you guys the details on that later. Um, let's see. Dark Side uh, FX Studios says, Oh, and Seek, there, since there is a Morbius spinoff coming, what are your thoughts on it? Maybe a team up with Venom? Do you remember that comic where Venom and Morbius fight together against those little goblin creatures? Uh, yes. Uh, my old videos, I did make an episode called the, the Evil Within. And I think that was, or The Enemy Within. The Enemy Within. And that's uh, that's where Venom and Morbius team up with Demo Goblin. At first, they're fighting Demo Goblin and these little goblins, and then they end up teaming up with Demo Goblin. Uh, so, yes, I do remember that book. We've reviewed it on the show. Definitely check it out if you haven't already. And uh, and I do. I, ever since I, when I reread that book and did that episode, I actually got really excited for a Morbius Venom team up. I was like, dude, if they do Maximum Carnage and Morbius and Venom are in the same movie together, I want that badly because I really like the chemistry between them in that storyline. I thought it was really good. I didn't remember it being that good when I was younger. So when I reread it as an adult, I was like, wow, I really like these two in a room together. A vampire and like this thing from outer space, you know, attached to a human. I'm like, this is, it's really great. It's, it's almost comedy gold in a way, but like, but it's but just the, the the two of them standing next to each other it's it's almost hysterical to see uh but their interactions are really great and i thought they did a great job on that storyline so yeah i'm with you i like that comic a lot though our friend venom panhead gaming says and you will probably see this in the breakdown video which i'm excited about but that image of eddie and the teeth and black eyes in the apartment looks scary that actually really did. I actually went by frame by frame. And when I saw that those white eyes bulge out with black shadow around them and the teeth, I was like, that's pretty cool. So again, like I said, the evolution of the look. I think when he starts off, it's just tentacles and like, a you know, you'll see flashes of a face or something forming. And then, you know, maybe we'll see him like actually transform into Venom, uh, which will be cool. Like I, I'm excited to see that process. Uh, one of the things I'm most excited about in this movie is just seeing those beats of him becoming Venom, becoming the character, uh, defining himself as that character. It, it'll be really interesting to see. Uh, and the give between him and the suit. Like, you know, what is he going to sacrifice in order to use, you know, utilize the powers and the abilities the suit gives him? But what is the suit going to sacrifice in order to connect with Eddie Brock? There's got to be a give and take there, and I'm really curious to see if they explore that in the movie. Um, Mark Marsden says, Venom looks awesome and I bet the final cut will look amazing. I'm hoping we see a lot of gore. Venom needs to be savage. Loving the dark humor in that trailer. Can't wait to see it. Yeah, I really love the humor. I love that at the end where he's just like, oh, I, you know, I got a parasite. So, uh, yeah, sorry. You know, and he goes, oh, anyway, good night, Mrs. Chen. And he's like, just ate somebody. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, of course, if the movie is PG and he, maybe he didn't eat the guy, maybe he just like, you know, I don't know. But I, from what it seems, he eats a guy. It did cut away, so you know we don't know for sure. We don't know how the final cut's going to come out. Uh, but I think he should just eat the guy, and blood should just spray all over the place. And then he should say that while walking out, looking at the lady, and there's just like blood all over the counter and stuff. And I know that we didn't see that in the trailer, um, but you know I hope they add it in because <laughs> I that's I don't know. I think that sells the joke more too. Is the fact that uh, there, if there's just blood everywhere, and the, even the old woman is like covered in it, and she's like. You know, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, that's funny to me. <laughs> uh, maybe some of you guys think I need to go get checked, but uh, but I think that's pretty funny. Uh, but that's also in keeping, I think, with the tone of some of those 90s comics. And I know some people are like, well, that stuff's outdated. They shouldn't be referencing that. It's it's goofy and it's silly. And it's like, well, there there's people out there that like that sense of humor. And those people are Venom fans, uh, you know, for the most part. And so, uh, you know, you may not like that sense of humor. Um, and you may still be a Venom fan and not like that sense of humor, uh, but you know it, it is kind of tied in with the character and kind of cheesiness and goofiness is kind of the character. And I, and I think I even saw Grace Randolph say that 
this has a very 90s vibe to it and I, and I think all of that is intentional um, you know everyone wants to credit the 90s for being like this horrible time for comic book movies uh, but I really liked you know like Batman Returns I thought that was really good The Crow is fantastic um, Blade 1 I think that came out like in 98 or 99 so I mean there's still some good stuff in the 90s man uh, so I don't know I, but I, I you know that's my opinion I know other people don't share that, so that's fine. I'll just, uh, I'll shut up now. Uh, all right, Tony F says, I'm 50-50 on this. I am hyped for the movie, but at the same time, I think just having Riot of the group um, and only him is a poor choice since they want to do Carnage. Now Carnage will feel like a rehash despite the character being different. I think that is what they should have done. So, and you also put in here, the first movie should have been Homo Arachnus, which is uh, Carlton Drake transforms into a giant spider creature, uh, which I think that would have been cool. Um, Carnage and then Riot and the other symbiote should have been the third movie and Carnage the second movie. And I don't think that's uh that's actually not bad. I actually really like that. Uh that that train of thought of escalation that you have here, upping the ante as you put it, uh, as each sequel goes on. I was fully prepared for this movie to deal with the Sin Eater. I thought that would have been really great, like a, a super well-trained person who is, um, you know, I know that's not very interesting. People will be like, oh, really? Venom's going to just run after like a, a serial killer? And it's like, yeah, but the Sin Eater was like super strong. He was well-trained. He convinced someone else that they were the actual killer. Uh, that story ties directly into Eddie Brock and like his, you know, failing as a reporter. Like I was, when we first started the show, I was thinking that was the route they were going to go. I, even though they had mentioned the, uh, the the lethal protector and plan of the symbiotes, I was like, all right, so I guess we're going to, but that was like a week or two after I started the show. So for like a week or two there, I was pretty sure that they were going to do Sin Eater stuff. Um, and I thought, oh, that would be great. They do Sin Eater some, you know, something here, and then they introduce Cletus Casting and introduce the, the, the possibility of other suits, and then the second one do that, or just straight up have Carnage in the first movie. Because I thought the whole point of this was Avi Arad and other people just being like, we got to do Venom. We love the character. We need it, and we need to do Carnage. We never got to do Carnage before in the, the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies, so let's do Carnage now. So I thought that was the whole point of all this, and then it kind of deviated from that. But I don't mind that it deviated. I'm still excited, and I, I'm interested in the Riot character and the fact that they're giving him a backstory and he's not, according to them so far, but we have to wait and see the movie to, to know for sure, but according to them, has a backstory and has motivation. So I'm interested to see what that is. Uh, so hopefully for that reason, him and Carnage won't feel like, you know, a Carnage won't feel like a rehash because when Carnage comes in, he's not going to have the motivation of invasion. You know, if Riot is thinking invasion and bringing symbiotes to Earth to wipe out humanity or, or overtake them, Carnage is going to be completely different. Carnage is going to be about carnage he's going to be about massacring people and just raising that death count uh and he's going to be a completely different kind of enemy than uh you know than eddie brock might be used to through this movie so we'll have to wait and see but i do like that thought process and that level of escalation that works for me and then also if he fought a giant spider monster he could award that as a trophy you know he could have killed a giant spider at the end of the movie or spider creature and then formed a symbol of like all right i killed that's i'm gonna that's why i have the spider on my chest because i killed a giant spider monster almost like a predator keeping the skull of their you know their prey you could have the suit be like all right well now we got this symbol on us because we just killed this giant monster um Again, kind of dumb and not well thought out. I like to just react to things on here, so don't take my ideas as like something I put a lot of thought into, uh, but just it's just an idea. <laughs> um, Caden says, that trailer was absolutely beautiful. I screamed when Riot showed up. Venom's humor was fantastic. Also, that scene where Betty makes the turd joke looks like a scene from the end of the movie because Eddie seems very comfortable. Yeah, so I don't want to go too much into more spoilers here, so I'll stop that comment there uh, But because uh, I think you might be onto something. But yeah, so I think that could be it. I mean, you see Eddie looks very comfortable with the suit at the end. He's making jokes about it. He's, you know, bye, Mrs. Chen, you know, whatever. I, I would say you're onto something with that train of thought for sure. Um, Craig Herbert says, absolutely incredible trailer, completely and utterly excited for this film, more so than Star Wars. There, I said it. <laughs> Only thing I'm not digging is the way that symbiote flashes over him, kind of like he's glitching and they, and the way they appear to have given him toes. Um, also, uh, I think at 155, he's crawling up the bridge holding a shard of metal. I think you're right. I, I did watch that and, and see that. Um, and then Ren Stimpy, which is kind of funny, uh, since uh, Tom Hardy compared uh, you know, his approach to the character as Ren Stimpy-like, uh, he says uh, he responded to Craig by saying, uh, Venom does have toes in some of the comics, which is true. Uh, Venom Space Knight series, uh, the Matt Gargan one as well. I haven't read Venom Space Knight, but I do own it now, some of the, the books or the two trades or whatever. So when we get there, I'm reading everything obviously in order. We're going to be doing, when the movie comes out, 
following the movie, we're going to stop the Matt Gargan stuff if I haven't finished it by then, and we're going to backtrack and do Eddie Brock stuff again before we get into the Flash Thompson stuff. We're going to go back and cover the stories that I didn't cover, like The Hunger and the finale and the Venom Project, or the Venom, yeah, Venom Project, Venom Agenda, Venom Agenda. We're going to talk about all those, but we'll eventually get to Venom Space Night and all that stuff. Um, but it is the sound waves. It's the sound. It's more as the the why he's glitching out. I talked about it in my breakdown video. It's because he has a uh, that MRIs shoot radio waves, and radio waves would upset a symbiote, obviously, which is why I don't go into MRIs anymore because my symbiote gets pissed off. Um, the swordsman says, "Don't worry, Seek. I didn't forget your Mac video. I'm just saving the Mac video for when I have some time, since it's long. But this trailer is awesome, and I am hyped. Need to watch it several more times. Hey, that's okay. If you guys can't watch all my videos, that is totally fine. It would, I, I would love that more than anything. Uh, that every of my videos gets like similar amount of views. Uh, that would be great. But I know that's not realistic thinking. And I know not every topic I ta uh, talk about is going to be interesting to you guys. You know, sometimes when I get video game stream, you know, those I'll be surprised if those hit 20 views. Um, and uh, same with like, you know, some of the stuff I talk about with comics, like when I review some of these comics or discuss them, you know, those could hit 40 or 40, 50 or sometimes 100 views, whereas some of my other stuff get like three, 400 views. So it, I would love it to be more even, but I, that's not realistic thinking. So the fact that they get views at all means a lot to me. And I'm just glad I don't average out 10 views a video anymore because I did that for years on this channel was just getting like 10 or 12 views per video, sometimes only two or three views. And uh, and it kind of makes you wonder like, oh, man, do I, like. I'm not doing this for validation, but I just want someone to see kind of the work I'm putting into something, and no one is. So it kind of makes you, so that's why I've taken a lot of breaks off of uh, YouTube before. But with this show, I was determined. I was like, I don't care if people watch it or not. I want to talk about Venom anyway, and I think eventually I'll find a Venom fan base. So I'm glad I did, very much so. And I'm glad, Swordsman, that you're a part of it. Because I know we don't always agree, but I like that we're both very civil about it, and we respect each other's opinions uh, regarding Venom. Uh, Taffy Venom says, your channel is the best place for Venom. Thank you, by the way. I think a lot of you people have said that uh, recently. So I put number one source for symbiote news or something like that at the front of my videos now. Um, and that's because of you guys. Uh, I am starting to take pride in the content I make. And uh, even though it's not always the best or best quality, um, I do pride myself that I'm not very reactionary. I'm not like a lot of other YouTubers out there who are just jumping on news and rumors and things that aren't, you know, uh, solidified. I really like Where's Barry's channel and I liked uh, Rage and Nation. He was the reason I started a YouTube channel. But I like both those guys because they will actually go, especially Where's Barry, will spend, you know, 20 minutes sometimes, that's all it takes, to research something and find out if it's true or not or if it's likely true or not before he makes a video on it. And that speaks a lot, of, again, about character. And so when I use those two guys as examples, that's how I want to be on my show. And, uh, and so I am now, after 200 plus episodes, finally going, you know what, we do make good stuff and we aren't like, you know, you know, Man of Bite and some and comic book cast too. We're not like some of those people out there that are just reactionary. I would like to one day be considered a credible source for information. That's what I would like to do one day. This is a, a side career path I decided to take on top of, you know, the job I already work. Um, but it's, this is a future I would like to have is as a credible source for information. So I try my best to and pride myself in when I when I deliver things to you guys as accurately as possible. And I'm not always going to be able to do that. I'm certainly going to make mistakes. Everyone does. Uh, but it's nice to hear you guys say stuff like that uh, for, for you know to me on the show um, because I am trying really hard to do that and not be reactionary and not just deal with every piece of information and rumor that comes out there. I really I'm trying my best <laughs> you know to not fall down that slide because I know it's easy to do that and that would certainly get me more views and certainly get me more subscribers but at the cost of what integrity I, I don't feel like doing that and I don't feel like becoming like one of those people. Um, and yes, I'm lumping them, you know, people like that in the same boat because they seem like they are to me. They, uh, based, and I'm on Twitter now, so now I can see how they actually act on a day-to-day -day basis as opposed to just in their videos. And it's not how I want to behave at all. Um, so Taffy says that and then says a lot of these people have no idea what they're talking about and they make statements that just aren't true. You're a true fan and you know what's going on. It's so satisfying. Well, again, I'm glad you think that. Uh, it really means a lot to me that you say that. And I will continue to try my best, absolutely. But if I ever screw up, Taffy and everyone else, please call me out on it uh, because I am not uh, bulletproof and if I screw something up, I deserve to be called out on it just like anyone else does who makes a mistake. So just know that I'm not trying to screw up, I'm not trying to make mistakes, but it's going to happen because I am only human. 
Um, AC Freddy says, this is amazing. Wow. And you know what, dude? That's the best I could have said it. Um, and that's it. I think that's everyone's comment. Man, that was, I didn't read every single one because some of you commented like five or six times and some of you had links and things like that. So I didn't get to all of them, but I got to probably like 90% of them. And that was a lot. Uh, and I think this has probably hit the hour marker around this time. So thank you guys, as always, very much for this. I appreciate it very much. Um, again, I'll put a link to my uh, Marvel article because I think that was mentioned here. Uh, I did a top five stories you should read if you're an Eddie Brock fan, but I did it in a way to where it's like, these are the top five stories you need to read to decide for yourself if Eddie Brock is a redeemable character or not, because I think that's a very interesting conversation is, is he really a good guy or a bad guy, or is he really in that gray area? And I think everyone has a slightly different opinion on that based off of a lot of your reactions in my comment section. So I pretty much tailored that article and that top five list to you guys uh, to uh, and to hopefully you could share it to other people and say hey pick up these five comics if you want to know about Venom so you can you know make up a, an opinion of your own of whether he's a good person or not and I think that makes it a little bit different than other top five lists out there so I'll put a link to that down below again since that was mentioned here um, and uh, thank you guys that have uh, have read it I really appreciate that Gorami Swordsman and a couple of the others uh, Xenozilla Sona all that so thank you guys for reading that article uh, but and also thank all of you for the comments I can't thank you enough for that and now we are at the end of another one hour video so I am tired I'm gonna go shoot a couple more quick videos before my roommate comes home this video took long enough and I will try to get this up immediately a big shout out to Martin Bats Bradford again for that intro really appreciate it man and I will definitely use it a couple more times between now and the movie coming out which is now about what 54 days away 56 days away something like that like we're really close to Venom so when we get to the 30 day marker I will definitely make a big video that day celebrating 30 days left until Venom comes out and I think that'll be like two days before the Spider-Man video game comes out so we're gonna be very busy that week in September so again, thank you guys for everything. As always, I love it, appreciate it. And let me know if you have any responses to this, anything I said here, let me know again in the comments down below. Thanks for watching my show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.